Futurama and Rick and Morty are both science fiction adult cartoons, so it's not unlikely that there are some ideas that both shows have done. Not to say that Rick and Morty outright copy Futurama, because they typically go a different way with their ideas. I'm going to compare an episode of both shows that have the same concept. And this probably won't be the only time I do this for these two shows. The episodes I'm comparing here are Meanwhile, the Futurama finale, and the Vat of Acid episode from Rick and Morty. I'm going to start off with Futurama. General rule, for each comparison that I do, whichever episode came out first is the one I talk about first. Now before I talk about this episode, I do need to point out that this is the finale of Futurama, so I might have to spoil the ending of the series, but this episode is pretty self-contained so that you won't be too spoiled on what happens in the series. After Leela has a near-death experience on an amusement park ride, Fry realizes that he might not have as much time with her as he thought, so Fry decides to finally ask Leela to marry him. Bags growing up. Back at Planet Express, the professor shows the crew his latest invention, a time rewind button. It allows the user to go 10 seconds in the past, but it takes another 10 seconds to recharge after using it, meaning they can only go back as far as they did the initial time. Fry takes the button so that he can relive his marriage proposal as many times as possible. We see Fry having fun with the time rewind device and using it to his advantage. He takes Leela to a nice restaurant where he delivers the ring inside their meal. Wanting a more special moment, Fry tells Leela to meet him at the Vampire State Building at 6.30, only if her answer is yes. But if the answer is no, don't come at all. Fry waits for Leela at the Vampire State Building, but after some time has passed, Fry assumes that she rejected his proposal, leaving him distraught. Not wanting to live life without her, Fry jumps off the Vampire State Building, but as he's falling, he sees Leela arriving. As it turns out, it's only 625. Whenever Fry uses the device, his watch doesn't reset along with it. Before he can hit the ground, Fry uses the time device to go back to before he jumped off the building. Unfortunately, Fry was falling for more than 10 seconds, so he's brought back to the point right after he jumped off the building. He is stuck in a loop where he can't stop himself from falling. Just when the professor and the rest of the crew arrive, Fry accidentally lets go of the button, meaning this time... Leela uses the button to save Fry, but kills the professor in the process. They eventually come up with the idea of using Bender's airbag to save Fry. This works, but it ends up with Fry accidentally smashing the remote and freezing everyone except for himself and Leela in time. After realizing there is no way of fixing the time stream, Fry and Leela decide that the only thing they can do is to live their lives together. They get married frozen in time, have their honeymoon frozen in time, and enjoy the rest of their lives frozen in time. Now there is more to it, but I'm going to end it here because I don't want to spoil exactly how the series ends. For now, let's just switch to Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty end up in a standoff with gangsters over some fake jewels. Rick prepared for this moment by placing a fake acid vat amongst real ones which he and Morty can make an easy escape to. This vat of jacuzzi heated Mountain Dew has built in air holes, a compartment of spare bones, and a ray gun in case someone tries to use a ladle to test the acid. When Rick and Morty fall into the vat, the gangsters are so confused and traumatized by the idea of falling into a vat of acid to kill themselves. Needing some time to process this, they don't leave the area just yet, meaning Rick and Morty are stuck in this fake acid vat for the whole episode. Just kidding, they spend about 3 minutes in there then decide to just kill the gangsters, take the jewels, and leave. On the ride back home, Morty asks Rick just what the fuck he was thinking, with a vat of fake acid? Rick isn't fond of the way Morty challenges his ideas, saying Morty couldn't come up with a better one. So Morty decides to pitch him the idea of making a device where he can save his place in time and go back to that moment like in a video game. Rick doesn't want to make that device because... But Morty assumes that he is just scared that he can't do it. After a back and forth, Rick finally decides to do it. 
Rick tells Morty that for once he can't do it and that maybe his acid vat idea wasn't very good. Or maybe I'll just kill you. What? But this is all just a setup for the reveal that he actually did it. And he lets Morty go crazy with it. He tests it out on his teacher and his love interest Jessica. And for the next 5 minutes, we get little to no dialogue in a montage of Morty messing around with the remote. During the montage, Morty meets a girl at a coffee shop and they begin dating. They decide to take a little trip together until a HORRIFYING PLANE CRASH OCCURS which leaves them stranded on a frozen mountain. Things get so bad it makes Morty almost kill himself, but instead he decides to go on a quest to find his backpack which he lost in the plane crash. He finds his backpack, and rather than going back to before any of this happens, which would erase his entire relationship with his girlfriend because he didn't make a save point since he met her, he decides to use his phone to call 911 and be rescued. He and his girlfriend make it home safely, but then Jerry, of course, confuses the time-saving device for a TV remote and sends Morty right back to the point where he meets his girlfriend. Morty goes back to Rick and tells him that he learned that you can't live life without consequences to your actions, but Rick tells Morty that everything he did with the device did in fact have consequences. As it turns out, Rick wasn't sending him back in time with the device, but rather sending him to another near identical dimension after isolating a specific moment in time, and in doing so, killed the Mortys that were already in that dimension and took their place. Morty feels absolutely terrible about what he did and wants to make up for it by merging all of the realities he teleported into into one and making him the sole Morty responsible for all of the things he did, which he technically already is. Morty finds himself cornered and the only way for him to avoid all the consequences to his actions is to you guessed it, fall into a vat of acid. And the people rioting against Morty do the same thing the gangsters did earlier, standing around wondering how they feel about this, but Rick just shoos them away. When questioning the validity of the acid vat, the FBI agent uses a ladle to test if it's real and gets shot by Morty in the process. And Morty learns to never judge Rick's ideas ever again. The similarities between these two episodes mostly amount to just the time rewind button. The specific story beats of these episodes are different. One main difference between the two time rewind devices is that in Futurama, they can only go back 10 seconds and have to wait for a 10 second recharge, while in Rick and Morty, they can go back as far as the user wants at any point they want as long as they press the save button. Another similarity these two episodes have is that they both feature a love story. In Futurama, you get basically the conclusion of the ongoing story from the whole series of Fry and Leela's relationship. While in Rick and Morty, Morty meets an entirely new, unnamed girl, and we get to see how this relationship folds out without even talking. While I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens to Fry and Leela's relationship, let's just say it plays out exactly how they wanted. However, in Rick and Morty, it ends absolutely tragically. After surviving the frozen wasteland, Morty makes it back home safely, only to be sent all the way back to the start by Jerry. Then he blows his one chance at getting back to his relationship. Both Fry and Morty attempt suicide in this episode when they think their relationships are over. However, Morty does it knowing that he can undo it at any moment. Fry, on the other hand, was actually ready to give up on everything. Morty also attempts suicide while he's in the frozen wasteland as well. I think both episodes are pretty good, but if I had to pick just one, I'd have to say the Vat of Acid episode. I think that episode plays around with so many different ideas that you have no idea where this episode is going. There are so many twists and turns within the episode that there is no one way the episode can end up. They go from vat of acid to time rewind to relationship with girl to almost freezing to death, back to relationship, back to time rewind, consequences of time rewind, and then come all the way back to the vat of acid. 
It was such a crazy, strange ride all throughout. Also, the comedy really shines through here. The lengths that Rick will go just to teach Morty a lesson is hilariously petty. Rick will not stand for anyone insulting his ideas, so he will have multiple versions of that person killed, undo a good portion of their life, and have every bad thing they've ever done come back to haunt him. Just to say his ideas are good. Although the comedy in Meanwhile wasn't bad either. It's pretty standard for the typical Futurama episode. The best jokes in that episode include Bender saying that Fry told Leela that he loved her 140 times, which is a reference to the number of episodes the show had, and Leela saying that Fry's proposal was so sudden after 13 years, which is a reference to how long the show ran for. Gotta love those fourth wall leaning jokes in the series finale. I also enjoy the Vat of Acid episode more on an artistic level. Having 5 minutes of the episode be done without talking allows them to utilize visual storytelling and humor. And it also makes the animation really shine. There's also a portion at the beginning of the episode which has Rick and Morty sitting silently in the vat of acid, making room for more visual gags, and also tricking you into thinking that it's going to be some sort of bottle episode. Meanwhile also has a sequence that is done mostly without talking towards the end of the episode, but it's much shorter and it's more of just a bunch of random things that they do, rather than an actual sequence of events. It's nice, but kind of low on stakes. Artistically, Meanwhile isn't much different from the average Futurama episode. But I do have to say that, as a whole, the show looks really good. I love the way the future looks in the show. It's very flashy and fast. In terms of utilizing the characters on their shows, both episodes really focus on two central characters, Fry and Leela and Rick and Morty. Being a series finale, you kinda wanna see more of the rest of the characters, but in Meanwhile, the other Planet Express members don't really get to do much in the episode besides come to Fry's rescue and then get frozen in time, and even disintegrate. But I think having limited characters works in the Vat of Acid episode. Although there is a lot that goes on in the episode, the core of the episode is pretty simple, focusing on the dynamic of Rick and Morty. Rick trying to get the upper hand on Morty, when Morty begins to get too cocky. And I don't think anyone would be too bothered on not having Beth and Jerry arguing for an episode. Meanwhile is more focused on Fry and Leela's love story rather than their actual dynamic, making the story less interesting when you only focus on them. And I think that there's more at stake in the Vat of Acid episode than there is in Meanwhile. For one thing, Fry was the one who put himself in a life-threatening situation 100% at his own free will versus Morty who was unexpectedly roped into it, and even when Fry does literally die several times in the episode, there is a convenient way out of it each time, but since Morty loses his remote, there is a legitimate threat that he could possibly die even though I was fairly certain that that wasn't going to happen. And when it comes to the final resolution of both episodes, Fry and Leela aren't as concerned about solving the time freeze problem as Morty is about saving the other versions of himself that he killed and then having to cover his own ass when everything comes back to haunt him. They just kind of enjoy each other's company for all those years and Leela even says that she was never lonely, even for a minute. But to be fair, spoilers, they do eventually find a way to solve the problem which I'm not going to reveal here because, you know, series finale. One thing I can't say about Meanwhile is that it definitely had more heart than the Vat of Acid episode. I thought it was genuinely sweet seeing the conclusion of Fry and Leela's relationship, especially with all those years building up to it. Compared to Morty's one-shot relationship that they intentionally try to screw him over with, the amount of heart and romance is what the core of the episode is really about. And since they went all out on this aspect of the episode, they kind of had to sacrifice everything else. They had to sacrifice using the other characters, they had to sacrifice a really intense story, and even the comedy at places. The Vat of Acid episode has a central core with Rick and Morty's dynamic, but not only are they able to have it without sacrificing everything else, but also in a way kind of amplifies it. With how over the top and ridiculous everything is in the episode, the story, the comedy, the animation, and the overall fun are able to really excel here. They even utilize the other characters pretty well. 
Jerry did more in the 5 seconds that he was on screen than most of the Planet Express crew did in Meanwhile. And since Meanwhile is more focused on getting to that love story more than anything else, there are some things in the episode that aren't really explained. For example, how did Fry get his hands on the remote when the professor seemed very protective of it? We never see how Fry gets the remote away from him. One scene he wants it, next scene he has it. No explanation there. That of Acid has its share of unanswered questions as well. For example, where the hell is Rick during the entire sequence where Morty has the remote, including the part where he f almost freezes to death? Why didn't Morty make a save point after he meets his girlfriend? And what exactly did Morty do to piss off all those groups of people, including the NAACP? Did he say the N-word? But it's okay for those questions to be left a mystery because most of that entire sequence was done for artistic reasons rather than serving an actual narrative purpose. Those kinds of questions don't need to be answered because the overall story works in spite of it. After all, a common theme in Rick and Morty is, don't think about it. Speaking from both an analytical view and as a fan of both shows watching these episodes, I can definitely say that the Vat of Acid episode wins it for me. Minus the hard aspect which this episode does for a little bit and then tragically subverts, it checks off all the boxes for me. Good story, good comedy, good action, animation, artistic choices, high stakes, many twists and turns, and most importantly, has a vat of acid, which as we all know is the most brilliant idea in all of history. And I'll be honest here, I kind of have a personal bias towards the vat of acid episode. This episode aired when COVID first hit and we were all stuck in the house, and the fact that the second half of season 4 was being released at this time really cheered me up. I saw episode 6 and I was like, alright. I saw episode 7 and I was like, okay. And then I saw this episode and I was like, yes! They nailed it here. I found myself watching this episode over and over and over again because, you know, what else was there to do? They're shopping with this fucking virus. If it seems like I'm being too hard on Meanwhile, know that I absolutely did enjoy that episode too. Analytically, they don't exactly do everything perfectly, but I had a good time watching the episode. It's a little simple, but it's perfectly fine. And the hard aspect really makes a lot of it up for me. Although Meanwhile does have its own standalone story, it seemed more interested in wrapping up the series as a whole. So even though Futurama did it first, I gotta say Rick and Morty had a better spin on it. Kind of ironic considering that they even mention in the episode that they are literally doing what Futurama did. Yes, Morty, I saw it on Futurama. Okay, it's only 